You need this? No, you don't need these anymore. Oh, uh, which? The tools. No, okay. the tools they do. The, I mean, the dip pliers. Yeah. Okay. Just the pliers. Okay. Uh, are there any particular artists out there that uh, have either influenced you or shocked and horrified you? Oh, my. Cause, cause reactions for you? Uh, I... I'd say there's a lot. Uh, I don't think that art is what influences me the most. Uh, I tend to be a holistic thinker and see vast cosmic trends, or international trends at least. Um, there's definitely schools of art that I am more, let's say, in awe of, right? Like, uh, maybe 20 years ago, I didn't have much patience for abstract expressionism, but I do more now. Uh, I've always been keen on Picasso. You can't really, you know, dump on Picasso. Sorry, you know, everybody's still doing Picasso. So who's dumping on, you know, like, sorry, Picasso's still all right. Um, I like Dada stuff. And I like, but data, what's interesting about data stuff is that it could also be accidental. It could be some kind of scrap of paper that triggers as much uh, pleasure, aesthetic pleasure, as something that's been tooled or contrived. So, uh, I don't think there, there's no artists or schools of art that outrage me. You know, I'm not going to go on a tirade about Damien Hirst is full of shit or something like this. I'm like, well, yeah. It's like, fine, it's, that's what it's about. It's about being full of shit. So he's nailing it, you know? So, uh, but I'm not gonna uh, write violent screeds against any contemporary artist. I easily can, because it's fun and floral, but what then, you know? That, that's, uh, uh, I'm not particularly impressed with the international scale of the Doodle Kings. You know, it's like, and I'm waiting for the fall of the Doodle Kings because it's it's enough already. You know, uh, that what's what's interesting, what's interested me is why does what's coming out of the art schools look exactly like what's coming out of Urban Outfitters looks exactly like what's coming out of contemporary rock posters. I mean, there's not much of a divide anymore between street and school. So I'm like, okay, I don't get that. Um, I don't understand why there's an artist in every single town, many artists in every single town that are still doodling, uh, you know, triangle forests or lasers coming out of creatures' eyes or something like this. It's almost like a, it's like the uh, internet has come and, and laid waste to any kind of local and has created these global phenomena, these memes of antlered children or... Uh, laser rainbow 80s stuff or whatever, you know, and that's cool, but it just becomes a trend, you know, and what I'm always amazed by the trends is that they actually outlast, I, I mean, they're, they're living longer than I thought they would, I mean, okay, everybody's gonna get tired of drawing triangles, no, I love the triangles, more triangles, you know, which I'd rather is like one triangle is way more powerful than a million triangles on your paper, like, sorry, like, get into the geometry, it's amazing, you know, and Right, draw a triangle on the bus. You know, I'd love to see that tag. You know, but uh, so there. So I do have opinions about the world around me. That's for sure. But that's all they are. Okay. Their opinions. And if somebody wanted to say, no, man, look, check it out. Look a little deeper. They're actually doing this and this and this. You know, and they're in a band too, and they do uh, video art. I'm like, oh, okay, I, I, I'm getting it. And this is what what I could walk into a gallery show and not like what I see, uh, but. Chances are that if I'm more aware of the artist's history and where, why they got to where they're at, I will appreciate it more. I like to see that history coming through. Um, yeah. Any local artists you want to give shouts and props to? There's, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, I, if I say one name, I'll be like, oh, no, that, there's another name, too, and there's another name, there's another name, you know? Um, there's a lot of boys and girls that are doing very exciting work in this town. Uh, this town is a magnet for amazing art. Um, and we carry so much local art here in the shop and exhibit it. So 
I, the, the safest one, would, the safest answer would be, well, just look through the merchandise we carry and the artists that we exhibit, and that's scratching the surface of the stuff that we enjoy. Um, and there's definitely kinds of art that wouldn't fit into this place that I love as well, you know. Uh, I like monumental scale art. I also love the minuscule and uh, everything in between, you know. Um, so yeah, the, I, what, one of my, what I think a, a, a good artist should be is a decent person. You know, I, I could love your art, but if I find out that you're a douchebag or you're a douchebag generally, like I'm like, I lose interest in your mark making. It's like, wow, you know, like I don't, cause I don't think there's anything magical about making marks on paper. Uh, I think it's the, um, the province of anyone to do this. It's where the artist says I am an artist is when they have done enough mark making on paper to witness a change in their own perception of that mark making and in their own practice of it, you know? Um, it's ritualized to a certain point, it means this and this, they know how to talk about it. I don't have any patients for artists that don't know how to talk about their art at all, you know, and say, I don't know, I just make it. Well, yeah, you just make it, you just make, you know, we all just make it, you know, but so have, that's where the artist comes in, you know, the word is like you can actually speak somewhat reasonably about what you're doing. Uh, just like hockey players can speak about the, the good game they just had in eloquent terms. Um, um, have you ever explained to anybody what you want done with the papers after you die? No. This is probably going to happen in the next 15, 20 years. But I'm also the custodian of these papers right now, and I'm keeping what's more important and moving, you know, moving the... the... Um, no, the thing that also sort of intrigues me about that whole sort of taking this stuff, especially as an art, the artists and as an artist, is um, artists... Which one, though, for large part, are known for making their mark. Yes. And at which point, wanting to leave something for posterity. Yes. Uh, you talk about graffiti, which is putting art on public spaces yeah. and leaving stuff. And then it's your practice is taking marks and yes. removing them from view or from their intentional view and stuff like that. That's just sort of use the fancy S art word duality juxtaposition that I find very, very intriguing. Well, it, <laughs> I do have a fetish for the textures themselves, right? And I have to say, what is mine? Why am I taking this? Uh, sometimes I just take it and I squirrel it away. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, let's say I collect um, uh, those tag stickers, you know, that people tag on or they write, make some art and they stick them up. And, you know, after a few weeks, they start bubbling and peeling off or whatever. And I carefully remove those and I store them. And sometimes I write, okay, St. Beatrice Street, May 2011, I found this. And I put it away. But I'm never going to trot that out and say that's my art. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's part of a collection. Uh, but it'd be very, I'd be very cautious. I'm not, um, it, it's, it's, uh, it is revealed that the garage sale poster is a found garage sale poster. It's not, uh, I'm not claiming the mark makings as mm -hmm. mine. Um, I do leave things behind uh, as well, uh, but I, and what bothers me about a lot of the tagging and the graffiti is, and the street art is that it's not subtle, so that it's basically attuned with people who are already overloaded with stimulus, visual stimuli, and it's not there to communicate with people who see details and who are looking for details some of it is yes uh, there, a very small minority of no, it there, it's a one to go back do you do you know actually know who stare is i spoke to him once okay and i like stare yes, so yes. I like, do you know what he's doing now no because yeah i spoke to him once back in back in the day yeah and he said no i don't want to be recorded Okay. And so I just talked with him and stuff like that. Great. Phenomenal time. But yeah. Great. <laughs> See, there's, yes, I, I, I don't want to paint it all with the same brush. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some work that is transcendent. Yes. Uh, and then there is somebody scratching windows, windows with a number. Yes. Over and over again. And although well, you scratch enough windows with the same number over and over and over again, <laughs> you can't become art. 
Absolutely, and I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand all those. It's just that um, one is talking to one's affiliates in the scene, which is fine, because one could argue that I am also communicating with my affiliates mm -hmm. in the scene. Except that my affiliates aren't necessarily other street artists. Mm -hmm. They're, I don't know, uh, art druids or something mm -hmm. like this, or Wiccans, um, or paranoid. Um, so that's interesting to me, uh, but I d am removing things and sometimes I'll take that weathered piece of paper and will classify it as part of my art and will, I will happily put it in an exhibit next to my drawings and next to my collages and next to my Xeroxes. And then there's other papers that I collect that I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Um, somebody else is going to get a kick out of this in its own right and I'll put it in a sleeve and I'll put it for sale for a dollar or ten. Um, and the people that will marvel at it tend to be uh, graphic designers, illustrators, people who are looking for a lost texture or a lost uh, typeface. Uh, not all the typefaces are on the internet. There are some that are still not there. And there are ones that are accidental or uh, written by hand or whatever. They're, 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 they tend to be special. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that happens. Um, now, with your art, for specific, actually, you can take for any of them, but more specifically for these sort of agglomeration pieces and so on, mm -hmm. how do you know when it's done? Uh, it's done when I figure out where it goes. Um, let's say I amass 200 sheets. Well, no, let's say I amass 500 sheets. And of those 500 sheets, I'm going to go through them all and remove or put aside 200 that go together for whatever reason. Um, nothing's complete yet, but once those have been harvested from the main archive and are put into another folder, and okay, now there's 200 here. I'll go through those 200 and take the cream of the crop, whatever that means, and I'll get 100 of them. If I manage to exhibit that packet of papers, that's done. Now, I have a very poor memory, and when those papers come down, they might get remixed again and shuffled back in, and that piece won't be presented a second time as a piece. Uh, if I publish those sheets of paper in a book, then that book is done, and that's the art object, is the book. The loose papers can be reshuffled to create some other experience. Um, so a, a collection is never really done, you know? Like I have a fine collection of um, airline knives, uh, cutlery that is no longer available to passengers. So I have a nice collection of these airline knives. And if I get more, that's fantastic, I get more. Uh, if I also get the gumption of, oh, I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a frame and there's gonna be black velvet in the background in little and I could set them all there and, it, and it's done and there's enough the nicer ones to fill the frame well that's done you know if I never get my act together to do that to mount them then you know yeah. once the jar is full the jar is full I have to start a new jar you know if I'm filling a jar full of uh, weird little plastic bits okay. how does that in terms of then with say your drawing and uh, comics and stuff like that how with those do you start with an end in mind and say I'm going from a to Z, or is it the different sort of discovering of the finish, the finishing process? The finish. Okay, if it's a, if it's a, just a drawing, uh, whether or a painting or anything that's on one sheet of paper that is not necessarily going to extend beyond that frame, um, it's finished when I feel it in terms of composition and balance of you know weights and all this mm -hmm. kind of thing, um, and that's when I could get, I can get my yayas out my drawing, yeah, is I could really attack the paper and erase and draw and smudge and whatever, and that's very fun. And if it's done, it's done when it pleases me or when I, you know, show it to somebody and they say, well, a little bit more, you know, I'm, I'm open to uh, suggestion. Um, comics or book works tend to be more, like I ha I'm a format queen, I've already got it. It has to be um, four panels per page, this many pages, go. Uh, or if it's a little book, it's like, okay, uh, one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded and folded again. Um, 
gives you eight postcard size surfaces to film. So fill them. Recto verso, get it copied, uh, fold, uh, collate, trim, staple, whatever, done. You know, next, you know, and on and on it goes. So I'm very project oriented like that. Because um, there's some things that are done perfectly. What I'm learning now is not to overdo it. To like maybe sparse is okay sometimes. Uh, maybe, you know, abstraction is okay. Because uh, I'm learning from other artists. And as I get older, I'm realizing that I don't have to um, shy away from particular tendencies that I have. If I have a minimalist tendency, well then honor that. If I have a uh, abstract expressionist tendency, it's okay, go for it. Don't don't lock myself into, you're the guy that draws bunnies, you gotta keep on drawing bunnies, you know? It's like, I drew some bunnies, you know? Uh, but like Spock, who goes through his period of like, I'm not Spock, damn it, and now he's like, I'm Spock, I'm Spock, you know? Uh, I don't wanna have this one defining icon that typecasts me, you know, but uh, it's not, well, but if, if, if that one defining icon, you know, is, uh, is on t-shirts around the world and it's making me some money, oh, fantastic, that's great, but it won't stop me from writing poetry, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. That's what you call her, Gaga? You don't call her lady? No, it's Gaga, She's, she insists. Okay. Um, can my head move? Yeah, oh, yeah. And I could go like this? Yeah. I could just uh -huh. Yeah. 